Hold on to your butts. These are the Squashbuckler Diaries. Welcome back. My name is Guy Hasson, and you are listening to the Squash Buckler Diaries, the daily epic fantasy podcast about the girl who lives in the dream. Actually, the girl who lives in her father's dreams, at least in season one. It's not easy living in your father's dreams. Every day he dreams of Justin dreams about adventure, and they go and they live on a pirate ship, a flying pirate ship, and they go have fight villains and stuff like that. And that's her entire childhood in a world where stuff happens. And the dream, the rules of the dream are actually active for her father, but not for her. So she's a normal kid growing up in a dream, and we are following her life from the very beginning. Season one is ages two to six. Season two, ages six to nine, and so on and so on. We hopefully will see her as a teenager, as an adult, and hopefully as an old woman, if she survives. Ah, 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 ah. Okay. So, we are at episode, and this is a daily podcast, so stick around every day, five minutes, seven minutes, and catch up on her life. And now, episode 44, Jumping into Ashes. Joy's age two and a half, told by the Red Dragon. General Hawk's city in the sky burned after Dragon Father and Dragon Diddle won the day. Dragon Diddle took in General Hawk with his singed, burnt wings into the infinite corridor in the belly of Bunny's revenge. It was a city resting in the clouds, made out of wood collected from the ground, giant nest palaces, malls, homes, and more. As soon as General Hawk was imprisoned, Dragon Father disappeared, waking up. With him disappeared all the denizens of the city who were trying to put the fire out. General Hawk remained behind, in prison, as did the city. Without anyone to put the fires out, it burned. Dragon Lil, now almost two and a half years old, leaned on the railing and looked at the fire slowly consuming the city. Bunny's revenge hung within jumping distance of the cloud. Dragon Lil was mesmerized by the sight and watched it until the last ember died. Then she watched the wind move the black ashes here and there. Then she climbed up to the plank, walked it, and jumped to the cloud. She was kilometers above the ocean, but she wasn't scared. She was so used to walking the plank that there was no risk of her falling. She walked among the ashes, then she touched them. They were no doubt cool to the touch now, since she did not flinch. She moved the ashes around and looked at how they behaved. She raised her hand and looked at it. Drangolil smiled, seeing how black her hand was. She did it again with both hands and enjoyed how both her arms were now covered in the black ashes. After a few minutes, she just jumped into a pile of dusty ash. She jumped in and out of different piles of ash for hours, it seemed. Then, tired and looking like a black cloud walking on a white cotton floor, she made her way back to the plank and from the plank to the ship. The only thing I could see of her were the two slits of her green eyes. The rest was simply black. She went into her cabin and within minutes fell asleep. A few hours later, Dragon Father appeared on the deck. His Earth Day had been spent and he was now once more asleep and dreaming. Joy! he shouted. Joy! He immediately went into the cabin. There, my sharp dragon ears heard him say, Joy, time to wake up. Dear mother of God, what the hell did you do? What came next, I will leave to your imagination. Told by the Red Dragon. Tags. Joy, Justin, General Hawk, body painting. So, hello. Guy here again. And I would like to say that what I've said before, Almost everything in the Squash Buckley Diaries is an Easter egg. This, this simple three minutes of a story is actually 
This three minutes, it's not a story. It's a, it's a piece of life. Three minutes, piece of life, slice of life. It has so many Easter eggs of stuff that's coming later. I don't just mean stuff that'll happen in a few weeks. I mean stuff that'll happen months from now. Stuff that'll happen years from now. This thing contains Easter eggs. And, you know, we are building a life. So when she's two and a half, there's Easter eggs everywhere about stuff that's going to happen later and i am planning i've planned her entire freaking life uh and it's going to be super exciting and now this is the easter egg stage all of season one is just easter eggs it's fun in the dream and easter egg city and there's no chance you're going to figure out what the easter eggs are until it's too late and when you do get it you won't remember this episode so you'll have to and then you'll have to come back and read this and say whoa it was there just in the beginning episode 44 um so I will give you no details other than just, you know, this thing is full of Easter eggs. I'm enjoying the fact that you don't know what I'm talking about. And hopefully tomorrow, uh, more Easter eggs. Not hopefully, definitely. More, tomorrow, more Easter eggs coming in episode 44, which will be called Like Father, Like Daughter. Um, and since we're talking about a girl who grows up in her father's dreams, perhaps that also contains Easter eggs. Who knows? Ha ha ha. Ha 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 I will see you tomorrow. And for now, the credits. The Squash Buckler Diaries are written and read by me, Guy Hassan. If you want to know more about the Squash Buckler Diaries, check out the website, guyhasson.com, which is G-U-Y-H-A-S-S-O-N.com. The theme music is called Brash Gentleman and is by Thomas Herodek. I will talk to you again tomorrow in the dream. <coughs> Ahoo! Sorry about that. when a plan comes together.